G'day Chief, here we are, welcome to the Inner Chief Podcast and the Chief Maker YouTube channel. Now Chief, we're going to talk all this week about the number one book recommendation of all the Chiefs we've had on the show. Before I do that, I just want to talk a little bit about, um, I suppose, the power of books in my life. Um, I, you know, I was a traveler and a backpacker and an absolute party animal, you know, like at university or president of the Beer Appreciation Society, you know, I just loved it. I backpacked the running of the bulls and all these crazy things all across Europe when I was a young bloke with my best mates and, you know, it, it was just awesome. Um, life was just fun, but eventually, you know, the, the you can't just have fun forever, I suppose. Like the joy, just, it's not, the highs aren't as high as they used to be and so you you're looking for more in your life and in uh, about 2006 um you know i had a few i was living in canada i had a few things not go so well for me job wasn't going well I had a, a girlfriend left me and i was sort of sitting on the other side of the planet all away from my home and feeling pretty sorry for myself but a few things happened um over the preceding months first and foremost at that point my boss um had become a really great mentor of mine and this guy called Chad and Chad was a reader and I remember uh, one day he said mate come over and we'll, we'll have a dinner at my place and we'll chew the fat. I went to his house and one of the things that blew my mind was the size of his library and as I got to know Chad a lot better I really came to understand that he was probably and still is to this day the most well-read person I've ever met. He can quote verbatim um, passages and quotes from all sorts of incredible books, um, from ancient Stoics to modern psychology, and you know some of his mentors are guys like Nathaniel Brand and the, these absolute giants of of modern thinking. And what so, so Chad took me under his wing and he gave me some books, and that that was really great. I think one of the first books he gave me um, was a book called Finding Meaning in the second half of life by a guy called James Hollis, who was a, a Jungian analysand. So that was a really important moment in my life. Um, about three, four months later, I uh, put on my backpack again and I was hitting the road. And I went via London. And in London was a good mate of mine, a guy called um, Justin McNamara, who happened to be on the show as a, one of our gurus in psychometrics a little while ago. And Justin, um, you know, we had a few beers and, you know, we'd spoken about that, you know, I was going through a bit of a transition in life. And he said, hey, mate, read this book. And the book was, uh, I think it was Lessons or Notes from a Friend. That's right, Notes from a Friend by Tony Robbins. It's about 100 pages. I'd never even come across Tony Robbins until this point, never heard of him. And it was just one of those books that, you know, at that particular point in time was exactly what I needed to hear. Um, and it changed my life because after that I started picking up a few more books. Um, before that I you know, just read garbage. And now, uh, you know, my, my poor old man had tried to give me um, Stephen Covey books for about 15 years. And I never wanted to read any of them. And all of a sudden, life had changed a bit and I was all in. And so my life changed significantly then because one of the things I did learn was how to photo read, which is how to speed read in a particular method. And Using that and just through normal traditional reading, in 2007 I read 100 books. Um, so I had these big boxes of books I'd buy from Amazon and then I would just churn through them. And, and I always created these mind maps uh, of each book after I was finished so I could instill it in my head. And one, one of the great things it did for me is made me question a lot about where I came from, my thinking. And this is some of the things that really came through in this list so we've created a bit of a list and you can download it on the chief maker website and it's basically the recommended reading of all the great chiefs that have been on the inner chief um, it's four pages long it's got heaps of great books now this isn't all of the books that they recommend remember each chief gets to recommend one book only so this is the number one book in the life of near a hundred ceos now, if that's not something that's going to give you an indication to something you should read, then, you know, man, we've all got some more work to do. <laughs> so come on, Chief. This stuff is absolutely vital. And I'm going to, I've got this, this is here, this little stack here behind me for those who can see it. I've got a stack of books that are some of the ones recommended by the Chiefs. 
And I want to read you something out of this Homer Deus, which was mentioned, I think recommended like four or five times. It's by Yuval Noah Harari. And um, Yuval says something um, inside the front cover. I'm just going to read it. He says, I encourage all of us, whatever our beliefs, to question the basic narratives of our world, to connect past developments with present concerns and not to be afraid of controversial issues. This is a theme that came through by all the chiefs, not just in the books that they recommended, but also in the way that we spoke in the interviews. They're always looking to challenge their thinking, right? The true chief never thinks they're the finished product. They're always looking to learn from smart people. One guy I met in America is a guy called um, Joe Polish, and he's got he runs this program called the Genius Network, and Joe has this one line, he says, if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. And, and you know, I've thought about that so many times. It's why I try and surround myself by so many great chiefs so I can learn from them. Right? It's that humility that you've got to bring to these engagements to try and learn as much as you can from great chiefs. This is giving you an insight into their soul and their thinking. You know, there's, there's four main topics that this list is broken up into leadership and culture, strategy and business, personal growth and humanity. Sorry, there's only three. What's interesting is personal growth and humanity has two full pages. The other two are one page each. So Chief, let's dive into five of the key themes that went throughout this list. This is me looking within each of the books that are in there and the topics and saying, what are the five things these chiefs are coming back to again and again and again? The first one is all about being bold and taking action. You know, I look at the leadership and culture piece and I look at the strategy thing and there's, you know, there's about sort of 30, 40 books there, maybe 30 books. And it's really, really clear they're looking for something to be bold about, to really make a stand. Right, which really links into number two, which is not only being bold and making a stand and how to do that, but then bringing your people with you and linking it to purpose and culture. So all the chiefs, when I look at these books, you know, like the founder's mentality around about the, the trying to build a culture of people owning the business, you know, leading change, five dysfunctions of a team, the classic by, by Len Sione, you know, like these are really important pieces that link being bold and creating a culture in the business where people go, I want to go there. That's what I really, really want to do. And if, as a leader, if you think about it for a minute, if you're not bold and you're not creating a culture that people want to be part of, you're not a chief, right? You're not not really having a crack. So if you do a bit of a, like almost a self-assessment for a minute and say, well, how bold am I? How much action am I taking in the world? And have I really got a great culture? you score yourself on those two quite quickly, you'll work out that maybe you do need to do a bit more reading in this or a bit more learning in this in order to get your skill up because it's one thing that absolutely fascinates these CEOs time and time again. So those two things, one of the first two themes. The third theme is a fascination with knowing themselves. A lot of chiefs realize that their brain or the way they think is the biggest risk in an organization. Their own thinking is the one thing that could go wrong. And if they get the strategy wrong or they make the wrong call on something, it can cost all the owners and all the people in the business an enormous amount. So there's a real fascination with CEOs and understanding how they think, right? How they control themselves, which takes me to the next one, which is this um, fascination through a lot of the books on clear thinking and little habits that drive um clarity and 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 staying or staying disciplined in the moment because you know right now in the business world it's very chaotic there's so many bits of information there's so much unknown you get just hammered by emails and requests and I, from the ceos that i've i've worked with one thing that really amazes them is when you get into the final ceo role there's a number of stakeholders and amount of information you've got to de- you've got to deal with sort of triples so they're sitting here in this in this position where every decision they make is vital. So they've got to be clear on how they make those decisions and then they've got to have their own rhythm, their own process 
for staying in the moment, for staying in flow. So that's um, theme three and theme four. And that sort of comes out um, in books like the Atomic Habit, Habits book. It comes out in things like um, The Big Leap, which is about identifying fears, um, The Art of Learning by Josh Waitzkin. These are really important sort of books to help you understand how you think and kind of discipline that you, you want to bring into the world. The final theme, which to be honest, isn't really that apparent. I had to look quite deeply to find this fifth theme, and it's all about communications. You know, being really, really clear on your communications and, and relationships. There's so much in here about making sure that the way you communicate and the depth and the trust of those relationships um, are built over time as a CEO. And in fact, it goes through all of the topics. So, you know, there's ones that are really absolutely clear about it, like Made to Stick by Chip and Dan Heath. Um, uh, and there's others like How to Win Friends and Influence People, the old classic by Dale Carnegie. So these are the five main themes. So I'll just summarize them for you again. So the five themes are being bold and then connecting your people to purpose and, and, the, and the, the vision of the business. The third one is knowing yourself and the kind of decisions, your own biases. Uh, the fourth one is clear thinking and sort of rhythms that drive discipline. And then the fifth one is influential communications. And if you think about that as a set of topics, it sums up you know, the key, key points of being a great leader, of being a true chief. A couple of other key things came out. So one, we said it's very, it's very varied reading. Two, um, they're always going to challenge their bias and also to fill their gaps. So you can see when you speak to a chief that if they're really, really good at one particular part of a business, they're probably going to learn about something else. So if they're great at leadership and culture, they're probably going to learn more about strategy. If they're great at strategy, they're probably going to learn more about leadership and culture. That's very natural to try and be more confident and more capable in your role every single day. So here's another key point. is I often ask, I ask this question to every chief that comes on the show. Those that have listened to a lot of episodes will note that not all great chiefs read. You have to relieve yourself of that pressure. If you are not a reader and you find no joy in it, or maybe you already read 500 pages a week because that's your, your job as a chief or as a, someone who's going up through the ranks, that's okay. I've seen a lot of things out there in the market around um, the average CEO reads 22 books a year or 100 books a year. You know what? Just relieve yourself of that kind of pressure. If that's who you are, that's okay. There's many other ways to learn, all right? Um, now, Jonathan Ling was one of the great CEOs we've had on the show. I know his track record is nearly unrivaled. Jonathan's not a great reader. He already reads so much in his day job that for reading externally and learning, he goes and has experiences. He goes and um, exposes himself to new organizations and sectors he doesn't normally get exposure to. He listens to podcasts and audiobooks. He does it a different way. So while this is a recommended reading, what I want you to understand is it's a recommended learning. That's what this is about. Find what you've got to learn and then fill the gaps, right? That's a really great thing to, for us to all remember is if you don't love reading, don't force yourself to, right? Um, the next thing after that is it's the application of learning. You know, if you don't apply the knowledge, so if you don't apply the learning you've, you've, um, you've picked up in a book, it's not knowledge, right? It's just some stuff you've, you've read about. Knowledge and wisdom comes when we get into the application. So this is why I do things like get a mind map together and then try and see how that translates into my, uh, the way that I run my business or the way that I do my coaching or the way that I live my life externally. So Chief, this is this stuff is pure gold. And I, I look at this list and um, I haven't read half these books yet. So I've got this fantastic list of books that I still really, really want to read. You know, there's some absolute crackers here on uh, leadership and legacy, um, on sales and marketing. There's the old classic Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Um, you know, these are really, really important books in the history of humankind. We've got a couple here that were written by chiefs. This one here, this orange book here, Not Guilty by Nicolette Rubenstein. She was on the show. We've got the Freedom Journal. We've got Noel Whitaker. We've got Freedom Formula by Bushy Martin, who's one of the best storytellers we've ever had. So chiefs, the challenge is out there. Now, find some way to learn. Books if you want to. Here's the list. Just jump on chiefmaker.com and you can download it. And um, 
go to work. As always, remember to stay epic. <laughs>